Conshohocken, PA at this sprawling steel mill on the outskirts of Philadelphia, the workers have one number in mind. Not how many tons of steel roll off the line, or how many hours they work, but where they fall on the plant's seniority list. In September, ArcelorMittal, which owns the mill, announced that it would lay off 150 of the plant's 207 workers next year. While the cuts will start with the most junior employees, they will go so deep that even workers with decades of experience will be cast out. I told my son, Christmas is going to be kind of scarce, because mommy's going to lose her job soon, said Kimberly Allen, a steelworker and single parent who has worked at the plant for more than 22 years. On the seniority list, she's 72nd. The layoffs have stunned these steelworkers who, just a year ago, greeted President Trump's election as a new dawn for their industry. M.R. Trump pledged to build roads and bridges, strengthen, buy America, provisions, protect factories from unfair imports and revive industry, especially steel. But after a year in office, M.R. Trump has not enacted these policies. And when it comes to steel, his failure to follow through on a promise has had unintended consequences. Foreign steel makers have rushed to get their product into the United States before tariffs start. According to the American Iron and Steel Institute, which tracks shipments, steel imports were 19.4% higher in the first 10 months of 2017 than in the same period last year. That surge of imports has hurt American steel makers, which were already struggling against a glut of cheap Chinese steel. When ArcelorMittal announced the layoffs in Conshohocken, it blamed those imports, as well as low demand for steel for bridges and military equipment. James Rakaz, a spokesman for the Commerce Department, said the administration was aware of the plight of American steel workers and will continue working to halt unfair trade practices that harm our economy and kill American jobs. In 2008, before the financial crisis struck, the plant ran around the clock. Now, the mill coughs to life just five days a week, for eight hours at a time. The machines shovel 10-ton steel slabs into a furnace, where they are heated to 2,000 degrees, then funnel them through giant rollers and cooling jets of water, like a massive, fiery car wash. The plant's specialty is ultra-strong, military-grade steel something that Eric Smith, a former army paratrooper who has worked at the plant for over 30 years, prides himself on. M.R. Smith ranks 16th on the plant's seniority list, and he expects to survive the coming round of layoffs. He grew up just down the street. The weathered houses of his old neighborhood on that dim day were fringed with icicle lights, evergreen bows and flags paying homage to Santa and the Philadelphia Eagles. As a boy, he would long to work at the factory as he passed it. These days, he said, he gets a sinking feeling as he goes through the turnstile and enters the plant. You just got to keep on pushing forward. It is sad that Christmas time is coming around, he said.